Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss a class of compounds called both mercaptans and thiols. Recall the very, very important uh, class of organic compounds, the alcohols, which can be written as an R group attached to the hydroxyl group OH. In some ways, we can think of an alcohol as a water molecule where one of the hydrogen atoms has been substituted with an alkyl group. The thiols, or mercaptans, are a class of organic compounds where we have an R group attached to the sulfhydryl group, SH. We recall, among other things, that sulfur and oxygen are in the same family, so that we can think of thiols as being uh, related to the alcohols merely by substituting uh, one member of the oxygen family for another, just replacing oxygen with sulfur. Similarly, as we did with alcohols, if we start with the compound hydrogen sulfide and we replace one of the hydrogen atoms with an alkyl group, that again gives us a thiol in the same way that substituting one of the hydrogen atoms of water gives us an alcohol. Please see the following figures for computed structures of four of the simplest thiols. We can synthesize thiols by a process analogous to the synthesis of alcohols by using the correct nucleophile. Instead of using the hydroxide ion for the thiols, we use the sulfhydryl, the bisulfide or hydrogen sulfide ion, depending upon how you want to call it. Again, it's going to have a nucleophilic attack on a chloro uh, or haloalkane. SH- is our nucleophile. Again, we recognize that we have a um, electron deficient carbon because it's attached to a halogen, which is very electronegative. So simultaneously with the nucleophilic attack on carbon, we have rupture of the carbon halogen bond with the electrons going with the halogen. So this is the SN2 type of reaction. Our leaving group is going to be the halide, and it gets better in the order fluorine being the least good, followed by chlorine, bromine, and then iodine being the best leaving group. We end up with the halide ion, and our primary organic product is going to be the desired thiol. Now we are ready to look at some specific examples of reactions. In our first case, we're going to have a nucleophilic attack of SH- on a halomethane, in this case, particularly fluoromethane. I know what you may be thinking, and you may be yelling at the screen right now, that in reality, we would not do this because fluorine is such a bad leaving group. And that is true. One of the huge advantages of computational chemistry is that we can predict we can calculate reactions that would not be practical in the laboratory to show in some ways exactly why they're not so practical. So let's see what happens here and then we'll discuss why we are using the example of the fluoromethane in this case. SH- is our nucleophile. It's going to attack the electron deficient carbon there, the slightly uh, positively charged carbon. We have, at the same time, we have rupture of the carbon-fluorine bond with the electrons going to fluorine, and we're left with, as our major organic product, CH3SH, which we would call methanethyl, or methylmercaptan, plus 
you have to account for the fluorine as a leaving group as fluoride. And this is our net reaction. We will see in the following figures the computed transition states for this specific reaction and also the cases where we have the chloromethane and the bromomethane. Later in the video, in Table 1, we will show you tabulated the computed energies of activation for the various different halomethanes. And what you will see, not only for the halomethanes, but for all the examples that we show, that in every single case, the energy of activation for the fluoro compound is much higher than for the chloro compound, which is higher than for the bromo compound. And we're, this is a computational way of clearly showing that what we already know to be true is that fluorine fluoride is a very poor leaving group, chlorine is a pretty good leaving group, and bromine is an even better leaving group. For the sake of uh, time, to save some time, we have not computed the examples with iodine, but we know that iodine as iodide is the best of all of the leaving groups for these examples. Our next series of reactions, which will show the attack of hydrogen sulfide ion on haloethanes, in this specific example, chloroethane. So, as we recall previously, we have a nucleophilic attack on the carbon that bears the halogen, and it becomes more reactive because of the fact that we have the electron withdrawing effect of the electronegative element chlorine. We have heterolytic blind cleavage. So the electrons go with chlorine to form chloride. And we're left with our major organic product in this case. Ethane thiol, or ethyl mercaptan, we can call it. Plus, to account for all the atoms involved, we have our leaving group, which is chloride ion. Please see the following figures, which show computed structures for the transition states for the nucleophilic attack SN2 on various haloethanes. For our next series of reactions, we're going to have nucleophilic attack of hydrogen sulfide ion now on one halo propanes. We call it SN2 reaction is favored for primary carbons over secondary carbons because of the uh, diminished amount of steric hindrance. So our nucleophile is going to attack the carbon bearing the halogen. At the same time, this bond is going to break and both electrons are going to go with bromide, and we're going to be left with our major organic product, uh, product in this case, which is going to be propane thiol, or one propyl mercaptan, and our leaving group, which is the best leaving group we've had so far, which is bromide ion. And recall that it's the best leaving group. Uh, somewhat paradoxically, it's not because it's the strongest base, it's not the weakest base, but because it is the most polarizable. So it helps stabilize the transition state because being a very large um, atom with lots of electrons, it can be easily, uh, the electron cloud can be easily moved in the electric field. So it's the polarizability 
of bromine that makes it a superior leaving group to chlorine, which makes it a su superior leaving group to fluoride. Please see the following computer structures for the nucleophilic attack, SN2, of hydrogen sulfide ion on various one halo propanes. For our fourth and final series of reactions that we're going to look at in detail, here we have the SN2 attack of hydrogen sulfide ion on one halo butanes. And as always, we have our nucleophile is going to attack the carbon bearing the halogen. In this case, we have iodine. The electrons are going to leave with iodine as iodide, which is our best of all halogen leaving groups. To get a major organic product, we have our one butyl group here. So we have one butyl mercaptan, or butane thiol, as our major organic product. And then our leaving group, to balance charges, is iodide in this case. Please see the following computer structures for the transition states. Uh, for the nucleophilic attack of hydrogen sulfide ion on various one halo butanes. Please see the following tables, which show uh, computed parameters for the energies of activation for the transition states in the nucleophilic attack of hydrogen sulfide ion on various one halo alkanes. And then see in table two, the computed enthalpies of reactions for the nucleophilic attack leading to the thiol mercaptan products. I'm very glad to be back with you again after a hiatus for the summer. I thank you again very much for your attention. Have a good one.